Hey friends and welcome to my show where today we're going to be doing science, an experiment even, a delicious experiment in fact, because this is my test kitchen, a place where I bake something I've never made before, adding my own little twist to old classics and showing you how to do the same. Today we're going to do something easy, delicious and super comforting, stuffed cookies or as I like to call them, bits of bickies. First things first, preheat your oven to about 165 degrees celsius or 330 degrees fahrenheit and line some cookie trays with parchment paper. Once that's out of the way, get a medium mixing bowl and sift in two cups of plain flour before adding a half teaspoon each of baking soda and salt. Mix these together a little to get them nice and combined and then put the bowl somewhere safe. Next up, in a different medium bowl, cream together 3 quarters of a cup of melted unsalted butter, 1 cup of brown sugar and a half cup of white sugar until they're well blended. I'm using a stand mixer, but a hand blender will work too. On a 6 speed device, creaming is about a 4 and it takes about 2-3 to three minutes, which gives me enough time to tell you that it will help you out a lot if you let the melted butter cool back down to roughly room temperature after you melt it. Also, for the brown sugar, make sure to pack as much of it into that single cup as you can. Really cram it on in there. Once that's done, beat in one tablespoon of vanilla extract or essence or whatever liquid vanilla you use, one egg and one additional egg yolk until the mixture is light and creamy. Beating is done on a lower setting than creaming, about a 3 out of 6. Now it's time to mix in the dry ingredients. That's the bowl we prepared at the beginning a bit at a time. I do it in three batches and I certainly wouldn't suggest doing it in any fewer. I'd also suggest that you do this step by hand. If you've got a stand mixer with a paddle attachment, you can use that especially if you find mixing difficult because you have a disability that makes hand mixing hard, but a hand mixer itself with beater attachments isn't really going to do you any favours here. The other thing to look out for is that you want to be careful to mix until the mixture is just combined. This is because as you mix your dry ingredients through the batter, you develop the gluten in the flour more and more, and as the gluten develops, the dough will become firmer and more elastic, which really isn't something that you want in a nice soft cookie, unless you like tough, leathery baked goods. So now that we've just mixed the dry into the wet, it's time for the fun part. For this you'll need two cups of mix-ins, or as I like to call them, bits. Stuff to give your cookies a bit of flavour, texture and most importantly, fun. Most people at this point make chocolate chip cookies using, believe it or not, chocolate chips. And that's fine I guess, but really there are so many completely awesome things you can do at this point. You can add any bits to your cookies that you like as long as you follow two basic rules. Rule 1. It must be solid. No liquids or powders can be added to your dough at this point in time or you'll throw off your ratio of ingredients and end up with cookies that are either too dry or too wet. And rule 2. Don't add any bits that will release excess moisture into the cookie during baking. This includes mostly things like fruits and berries which are full of water. This is for the same reason as rule number one. Your dough will become a batter again and it just won't work. Follow those two rules though and you can add anything that you like. I'm using chocolate chunks because you can't go past a classic, mini marshmallows for an interesting textural experience, pretzels to add another textural note and to provide a bit of extra salt that will help balance the sweetness of everything else, and sprinkles for added cuteness. Mix it all together and you've got your final dough. Now, if you really wanted, you could just eat this right now, assuming raw eggs don't scare you and there's not the threat of salmonella where you live. But if you do want to turn it into cookies, then take your dough, about a tablespoon at a time, roll it into balls and put them on your cookie sheet, spacing them nice and evenly and giving them enough room to spread as they bake. Before you put them in the oven though, you might want to put them in the fridge for a little while. 5 to 10 minutes is fine if you're in a rush, but if you've got the time then half an hour is best. It gives the glutinous proteins in your dough a chance to relax a bit, which will improve the texture of the final product. Also you should definitely cover your dough with cling film, which I didn't do because I have ADHD and sometimes I forget to do things. Finally it's time to get baking. 
Put your cookie sheets in the middle of the oven and bake until the outsides are just starting to get golden. This should take about mm, 11 minutes and it definitely shouldn't take any more than 14. It's better for them to be slightly underdone than overdone because they'll keep cooking for a few minutes once you remove them from the oven. And speaking of removing them from the oven, once you've taken them out, let them sit on the cookie sheet for three to five minutes to cool and solidify for a bit before shifting them to a wire rack to finish cooling completely. Okay, you've got cookies. We made bits of bickies because they got bits of this and bits of that all through them. If you make them yourself, take pictures and show me on Twitter. I'd be super, super keen to see them. And tell me in the comments what bits you plan on putting in. Okay, I love you, bye-bye.